What's up people? Good day, good morning, good evening. I hope you're all well, I hope you're all blessed and I hope you're not too distracted by the spot that's clearly showing on my face during this video. <laughs> Please comment below if this distracted you today. But anyway, God bless you, I hope you guys are good. I pray you be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word, applying the word to your life. So today's study verses are Romans 12, 1 and Matthew 10, 38 to 39. And today we're going to be reading from the Amplified Classic Bible. Because that's a Bible I've been really deeply reading at the moment. And it is actually, uh, I believe, one of the favourite Bibles of my local pastor, Pastor Nelson. Big up, Pastor Nelson. But anyway, as it reads, Romans 12, 1, it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg, you, beg of you, in view of all the mercies of God, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. So, and then we move on. Matthew 10, 38 to 39 says, And he who does not take up his cross and follow me, cleave steadfastly to me, conforming wholly to my example in living, and if need be in dying also is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his lower life will lose it, the higher life. And whoever loses his lower life on my account will find it, the higher life. So what's this saying to you today? Take one second to think about it. And then we'll come back in one. So basically it's what it's telling you to do. It's telling you to live wholly for God. Not to not just live a little bit for God, but live completely for God. So when we see here in Romans 12, 1 from the Amplified Classic, it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God. So as we know, God is a merciful God, full of mercy and loving kindness to the second and third generation. He, he is, he is a, a merciful God. He is a God full of mercy and loving kindness, a loving, merciful God. So in view of these mercies, in view of his grace, in view of all the amazing things he's done for humanity, in view of the, all the amazing things he's done for us, what does it say? To make a decisive dedication of your bodies. That means dedicating yourself. That means dedicating your life to God. Presenting all your members and faculties. So presenting your whole self and all of your faculties. So, so presenting both your physical state and your mental state, and it says here, as a living sacrifice. So we must we must give ourselves as a living sacrifice. Why should we do that? Why should we give ourselves as a living sacrifice? Why? Because Christ first gave himself as a living sacrifice. Therefore, we should open ourselves up to his spirit, to the Holy Spirit, and allow the Holy Spirit to move through us and use us as instruments of his glory because he's already sacrificed himself for us. Therefore, the best and most loving thing to show our appreciation of thanksgiving is to live every day for Christ, to live the life that, that he would want us to live. That's how you show, you know, thankfulness to someone. That's how you show thankfulness to someone who's gave their life for you. So, for instance, if you and your best friend were going out and someone decided to try and rob you and pull their gun on you and was about to, you know, shoot a strap at you and your friend jumps in front of the bullets and dies in your and dies saving you, would you just go would you just go selfishly waste your life after that? Would you go and just squander your life after that fact? No. You would go out and live your life for your friend. You would live the life your friend never had to honour your friend. And that's exactly what we have to do to Christ. Yes, Christ is God. Yes, Christ is master, but Christ is also our friend and he died for every single one of us. Why? Because he loved us. Therefore we should go out and live for him. Live for him in order to glorify him. Live for him in order to respect him. Live for him in order to lift his name up and bring honour to God in Jesus' name. So we should present all our members and faculties. So that means presenting our mental state and our physical state. Giving ourselves as a living sacrifice means mentally and physically. That means putting our own will to the back burner. That means putting what we want to do to the back burner. That means dedicating the largest portion of our mental capacity to the things of God. That means serving the kingdom above all things. That means putting first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then understanding that then all things will be added to us. 
that means building God's kingdom and not our own kingdom. And too many people in the body of Christ today have made an altar of ministry. What do I mean by that? They've made ministry a false idol in, our, in their heart. Whereas they serve ministry before they serve God. And what do you mean ministry is a service to God? Yes. But if your aim is to build your own ministry to the extent that you're willing to, to sacrifice, you know, putting God first in your life. Or you're willing to sacrifice, you know giving yourselves wholly to God and that's a problem. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? Some people get into ministry for personal gain rather than spiritual gain. They get into ministry for themselves rather than God. And that's when ministry becomes an idol in their heart because they're doing ministry for the wrong reasons. We should all seek to do ministry. We should seek it to do, do it following God's will for our lives. Yes. If, if I'm honest, me, myself, I would love to lead like a huge church. I would love to lead like a, like a large scale church. But is that God's will for my life? I don't think so. I believe I'm meant to, to set forth a path or to start like, you know, building something which, which, will, which will lead the way in order to bring a greater ministry through my work to carry on, to carry on my mission. I believe personally, I'm not, I'm not meant to, but God's will is not, it's for me not to meant, meant to lead a large ministry. As far as I'm aware, I might be wrong. But if that's the case, I'm cool with that. Oh yes, I would like to lead a huge church, but maybe that's not for me. Maybe I'm meant to do something else. Maybe we're meant to be the second in command, but you only know that if you put God first. You only know that if you give yourself as a living sacrifice to God, but you don't put no idol in your heart. And here's another thing. If you're going to give yourself as a living sacrifice to God, nothing else can come first in your heart other than God. Nothing else can come first in your heart other than Him. We need to put Him first. We need to cast out anything we put above God in our heart. So it says here, holy, devoted, consecrated and well-pleasing to God. We need to be devoted and consecrated to God. Yes, I would like to do this. Yes, I would like to do that. But I want to do what's pleasing to God. If it's pleasing to God, for I've become like some kind of John the Baptist preparing the way for a greater generation and a greater minister, then that's what I do. Why? Because I'm devoted to God. If it, if it's if it's the will of God for me to be like a like to be like a youth pastor forever, then I do that job. I do whatever God wants me to do. Doesn't matter what I want. It doesn't matter if I want to be the next Stephen Furtick or Billy Graham or whatever. If that's not God's will for my life, then I don't want it. Why? Because I need to be wholly devoted and consecrated and well-pleasing to God. And that means putting God's will above my own will. That means putting his kingdom above my kingdom. Whew. Which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. So after the true service... And spiritual worship to God is following his will, giving yourself as a living sacrifice to him, living for him, living for his will and not your own will, putting him first in all that you do in Jesus' name. And it says here, Matthew 10, 38 to 39, And he who does not take up his cross and follow me, cleave steadfastly to me, conforming wholly to my example in living and if need be in dying also is not worthy of me. What does that mean? That means we need to sacrifice. That means we'd be, we need to be willing to sacrifice whatever it takes to follow Christ. That means even dying if needs me. That means living holy by his example, living holy by his will, and living holy by his ways. Not by our own ways, not by our own will, not by the world's will, not by the will of any other false god, not by the will of the idols of money and fame and popularity and internet clout, no. By the will of the Most High God, by the will of Adonai Yara, our provider, by the will of the Messiah Yeshua and the example that he gave us in his life and death. That's what we should be living by. And that should be our standard. Our standard shouldn't be, you know, some popular internet celebrity. No, the standard of how we live should be Jesus Christ and we should be willing to sacrifice whatever is necessary in order to follow him. Whether that be a job, whether that be a school, a relationship our family relationship, our relationship with our, with, with our partners, our relationship with our friends, our relationship with anything in, in our lives, we should be willing to be like, yo, I'm going to sacrifice this. Why? Because I need to pick up my cross and follow Christ. Christ never promised we'd live an easy life, but he promised us we'd live a blessed life as long as we keep following him. And that means as we go through many challenges, as we keep sacrificing, as we keep enduring, as we keep pushing through, he's going to bless our life as we go through these circumstances and situations. So it says here, conforming wholly to, to my example and live in living, and if need be in dying also. That means we need to fo follow him wholly, wholeheartedly, never compromising. A true Christian doesn't compromise the perimeters of their principles. 
That means if anything looks like it's going to compromise your faith, you turn away from it. You quit that job if needs be. You leave that friend behind if needs be. You move to another town if you have to, to avoid temptation. But you do whatever it takes, not half-heartedly. You do it without compromise, fully committed to the mission. So it says here, Whoever finds his lower life will lose it. And it put this in brackets, it says, The higher life. And whoever loses his lower life on my account will find it, the higher life. And without the brackets it reads, Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life on my account will find it. What does that mean? That means we've got to put to death our lower life, this life of the flesh, this temporary life which is passing away, and instead take up the higher life, the life of the spirit which leads to eternal life, the life that lasts not only while this decaying, this decaying body lasts, but lasts into eternity, into the next life, into the new heaven, into the new Jerusalem, into the new Israel. We've got to put this life first and be willing to put to death this life on the cross and pick up and pick up our cross and follow sacrifice 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 why because we understand greater is the things to come than the things we have now greater is the eternal life in the spirit than this temporary life in this flesh be why because the flesh is decaying it's going to pass away going to turn to dust just like everything we see around us in life today but the higher life the life of the spirit is going to last forever therefore we should look to store treasure in heaven before we store treasure on earth. We should look to store treasure in heaven, people, before we store treasure on earth. And how do we do that? By wholeheartedly following Christ, by putting him first, by following his example, by picking up our cross and following him, by offering ourselves as living sacrifices, presenting all of our members and faculties, all of our thoughts and feelings, all, 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 of, our, all of the first places in our hearts, we should be offering this to God and we should be offering it to his kingdom. That means following him. That means doing his work. That means serving in ministry. That means getting up when we don't want to get up. Not going to sleep when we, when we want to go to sleep. That means praying when we don't want to pray. That means putting him first. Striving to have a heart that put God, puts God first. That's how you offer yourself as a living sacrifice. That's how you pick up your cross and follow him. That is your rational and intelligent service and spiritual worship to God, putting him first. Why? Because he died for you. He sacrificed himself for you. Therefore, you should be willing to put your own wants and desires on the back burner in order to live for him and allow him to live through you in the form of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So as you go out today, think about these things. Think about the sacrifice Jesus Christ did on the cross for you and be willing to sacrifice whatever it takes in order to please him. Be willing to sacrifice whatever it takes in order to follow his will and never forget the mercies God has for you. Never forget the loving kindness God has for you. He loves you unconditionally, agape love, without condition. Follow him. Never turn away. Dedicate your life to him and you can't go wrong. You'll see yourself prosper. You'll see yourself grow. And you will see yourself store treasures in heaven as well as earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a fantastic day today, guys. Peace.